Four players from current Big Ten schools will be enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta in December. Penn State's Kerry Collins, Michigan's Charles Woodson, Illinois' Dana Howard, and Nebraska's Aaron Taylor all set to receive the college game's highest post-career honor. And I'm very pleased to be joined now by Dana Howard and Aaron Taylor. And for those who were not fortunate enough to be at the Big Ten kickoff lunch, and you guys were there as well, you both shared what I thought were very entertaining stories about how you found out about your induction into the Hall of Fame. So at the risk of asking you to repeat yourself, kind of cognizant that we have a different audience here, take us through those stories, and Dana, I will start with you. Well, uh, essentially what it was, I was in the process of moving from the other house. So what ended up happening was once we got to the other home, um, she opened the box and was like, there's a football in there, Dad. I was like, oh, okay. And uh, she said, I'm just going to throw it around. I was like, all right. <laughs> I said, so what is it? She said, it has words on it. I said, okay, well, what does it say? She said, something about college football hall of fame, something. Oh, well. I was like, whoa, baby, you're not throwing that around the house. Bring that to me. So um, that's how I found out that uh, I got inducted. I had no clue at first. And then you were talking about there was a letter as yeah, well, there right? was a letter. So you know how it is when you want, if you don't want someone to know something, you, you write it down. Because yeah. most of the time, people aren't going to read everything anyway. <laughs> and so uh, um, I found at the bottom it said, you know, uh, don't let anyone know until January the 8th. Well, by that time, we'd already sent out 30, 40 text messages until I read the bottom. I was like, oh, we're, we're, we're kind of messing up here. You know, we, we shouldn't send it out yet. We were like, oh, okay, well, it's done now, so... This is a convincing case to call people on the phone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Inform them. What about for you, Aaron? Yeah, I know it was similarly you, kind of crazy story. You know, for, for, for me, I, I was sitting in my uh, my office, and a and, uh, co-worker of mine brings a box over and throws it on my desk because you've got something from the Football Foundation. What is it? You know, big old check. And, you know, he was, he was talking. And I said, man, I wish it was money. And I started looking, and I opened it up, and it says football. And, and I'm like, Dana, I actually read my letter, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Offense aside, we, we think a little more. Oh, a little oh more here depth, we go. Right? All right, I see where this already, is going. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, I, so I read my letter, and, and he's standing beside me, and we've got, you know, several other coworkers around. Well, they all know right away. And uh, so, yeah, I, I have to tell them, say, hey, be quiet. You know, we, we, we can't say anything. I did tell my wife, and, yeah, it was a tough two, three weeks before yeah, – uh, you know, before they announced it on TV, and and, and yeah, but what 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 a great way though, right? I mean, it was, sure. it was it was it's pretty cool. Uh, no doubt. I, I want to talk about each one of your careers, Aaron. We were talking about this at the luncheon as well. You were not a highly recruited player coming out of high school. You played in Texas. You were a guy who, as you said, one offer before Nebraska stepped in. It's certainly not the highest level offer. Out there, what did you say, New Mexico State? Yeah, New Is Mexico right? State, yeah. Okay, yeah, so. you know, it, yeah being, being six foot one, right? I, I, I'm not getting recruited by a whole lot of uh, whole lot of colleges out there. And, and you know, Spike Dykes, even at Texas Tech back then, um, yeah, so said, hey, you, you're, you're too short. We did offer a kid out in California. If he doesn't take it, you can have it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, right? Well, what's the lesson there for, for young kids who maybe are a little bit overlooked in this process? Uh, you, you know, for, for, for me, it's just perseverance, right? Hard work. It, it's, it's, it's all the buzzwords that you hear nowadays. This is, it was the same back then, right? Um, you know, I knew I had the talent. I knew I had, had the athletic ability to, to, to go out and perform. But I also had to figure out how to adjust my game, right? You know, because a lot of the players were larger than me. Um, uh, you know, longer arms, right? Uh, um, which was a, a, a tough deal for me to adjust to. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's that perseverance, that hard work, that dedication, and, and, and finding ways to, to change your game to get better every day. Dana, we were talking about the linebacker crew you had when you were in Illinois, and it still blows my mind. I mean, you, Simeon Rice, Kevin Hardy, John Holasek. Yep. In your mind, best linebacker crew ever in the Big Ten? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we were. I mean, uh, two times, two years in a row, we were best. Linebacker crew uh, in the United States, uh, two first-round draft picks, second and third pick, uh, two Buckets Award winners. Uh, all of us were all big teams. I mean, what more can you ask for? You're not going to get better than that. No, it's pretty good. It's probably some amazing names there and some incredible talent. It's funny, Howard Griffith was telling me this week that the year that you were redshirting would have been his senior year, and you yes, were on the scout team. I was. And he was telling me that you were so good that while you guys were going, while they were going through reps against the scout team, they essentially had to tell you to get off the field because you were disrupting what they were trying to do. What are your recollections of that well, year as a redshirt? Well, he's right. I just, I felt like I was, you know, I didn't come here to be uh, a blocking dummy. I came here to play ball. That's that's where I came from. In East St. Louis, that's what we do. We play ball. We don't, we don't play 
fake play. We play football. And so I just, I couldn't take it. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I normally do. And after that, they were like, oh, well, you know, you need to step to the sideline before you hurt somebody. So, Aaron, you played with Scott Frost on a national championship team. There's a ton of excitement over Scott's return. What are the qualities that you saw in him as a player that you think will translate to being a coach? Yeah, right. The, uh, you, first and foremost is the competitiveness that, that he has. He, he displayed that when he was uh, – our quarterback, well, he displayed it when he came over from Stanford. If you remember, he was a, a safety at Stanford and then transferred in, you know, because he went out there to play QB, ended up playing uh, safety. And then uh, when he came back, he was running scout team wow. because he had to. And, and uh, boy, he would get beat up, beat up by that Jason Peter, Grant Winstrom, black shirt. And, and the, the fire and the competitiveness and, and the, the, the wherewithal just to stay in the pocket and, and do it day in, day out. Um, yeah, man, he's competitive. He, we, we saw that at Oregon. We saw that at UCF. And uh, we're excited to have him back and, 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 to, and to also bring back a little bit of the, the pillars that Coach Osborne had, you know, with the honesty, integrity, character, and, the uh, you know, things like that. We're excited, excited about it. Quick final thoughts from each one of you. Aaron, obviously you didn't play in the Big Ten. Nebraska wasn't a Big Ten member then. How do you feel like the school has integrated into the league? I, I wish it's been better. I, I do. Um, I, I, I think it's good. I think it's good for our fans. I, I, I love the league, man. It's a tough league. It's what Nebraska is all about, right? Um, unfortunately, we haven't been where we should be, where we think we should be in the Big Ten. So I, I'm excited to see Scott and, and see how he transitioned this into the in, in the into the Big Ten and, and, and get competitive in the Big Ten and, and, and be where I think we should be. We should be up there competing for titles. Dana, I know you would echo that sentiment about Illinois. How does Illinois get back to where they were when you were playing? Well, I think Levy's doing a good job right now. I mean, recruiting is getting a lot better. Uh, like he said earlier, we were the only team in America that played like 22 freshmen, so they're no longer freshmen anymore. Now that's step up and be ball players, uh, the type of guys that Levy recruited and the type of guys that he wanted. Uh, I, I think he's going to do a, a great job. I mean, he's the right man for the job, so uh, I'm optimistic, you know. Dana Howard, Aaron Taylor, been a real pleasure to visit with both of you today. Congratulations, not thanks. just on this induction, but on representing your university so well. And thanks for Thank spending you. the time yeah, to visit with us. I appreciate it.